Please note that you can support us by purchasing all of our stories on Bandcamp, on CD, and as good old fashioned books and ebooks on Amazon. I'll leave the links in the description. Now, here follows The Will of the Woods, Episode 4. Well, are we off then? It's still night. You'll probably be very tired. You should rest. Where am I supposed to rest? I can't go back to the tree now. I know, but you should still rest. You're right. I feel tired, but I didn't take anything with me. I don't need anything to rest. I can do it anywhere, and any time. Any time? Of course. Do you sleep? Sleep? No. That I don't do. I just... Turn inward and quiet down. And what about the cold? It never bothers me. My cloak and I are one. It protects me against the biting cold of winter and flutters like a breeze on hot summer days. In my cloak I am always safe, but never free. Wraith, your cloak is so long and flowing. Could I perhaps just use a part of it to keep me warm? And sleep like that? I'm a dreaded apparition, Mirelia. Nobody rests in my cloak. But I'm not afraid of you. I'm so tired. Please let me. Mm, All right then. Rest in my cloak. And when the sun rises, we will set out together. Thank you. So soft. I'll sleep well here. Good. I will sit and guard you. Mm, that's so very sweet of you, Wraith. Mm. <sighs> Wraith, why are you weeping? I don't know, Marilia. Just sleep. Tomorrow we will see the mole. He may have an answer for us. Such a lovely morning. Rather golden in its sunrise, I would say. Most appreciated. Nevertheless, fur comes first, fur comes first. As soon as this porch is swept clean, it's time to head back inside and continue my work on... Um... Um... What was it again? Um, that thing I was working on. I was going to finish it. Oh, how dreadful these twilight years of forgetfulness can be for the scientific mind. Ah, yes, now it returns. The potion. Truly, a magnificent concoction of mine this will be. Well, I do suppose it needs a dash of cherry, doesn't it? No one's going to be interested in a tasteless potion. Fairly hard to find cherries this time of year. Rather impossible, in fact. Oh, the horrors of insufficient supplies. Even a brilliant mind such as my own cannot produce any true wonders of invention without the necessary ingredients. Ah, but thus is thus. Is my vision becoming too bad for these glasses, or am I truly seeing a rather unusual sight? Well, well, that's a pretty elven girl. And a rather hideous thing. What would these two be doing in these secluded parts of the woods? Voltum? Voltum the mole, alchemist? <laughs> the foolishness of youth. Yeah, I am a mole by species, and yeah, I do practice the art of alchemy, but to call me the mole alchemist is far too much of a simplification. Do forgive me. My name is Marilia. I am pleased to make your acquaintance, young lady. Hmm. 
And your, um, companion's name would be? Well, his name is, um... Wraith. Ah. And you are a... Wraith. Ah, yes. Fair. <clears throat> I suppose I might have guessed that. Are you in any way dangerous, perhaps? <sighs> Foolish old mole. No. Excellent. Well, a good morning to the both of you, then. Voltum, sir. Uh, d -d 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 Professor? Professor, we have come to see you on an urgent errand. Ah, are you in need of any services, items, information? Well, actually, sir, Professor, I mean, we are. Well, why won't you join me in my draughty brewery room? You mean your laboratory? Ah, uh, laboratory. <laughs> ah, such a naive and pre-scientific notion. No, young lady, I mean my draughty brewery room, of course. It's the room where I brew my draughts. My potions, if you will. Follow me. Please feel welcome, but do be very careful in the highest degree. Some of the rarest, most powerful, and especially easily knocked over potions in the world can be found right here. I'll be careful. Watch out! But I didn't do anything! You are standing uncannily, unpleasantly, disaster invitingly close to a contraption of a most fragile nature. Not to be disturbed by curious little elven hands. Just go stand a bit more over there, if you please. Mm -hmm. Over here? Not there! It's nothing. I suppose you couldn't help it. All right then, Mole. Yes, Red? We've sought you out because we are in need of your expertise. Hmm. Interesting little items you have here. I quite like this one. Um... Are you quite sure you absolutely positively want to pick up that extremely rare and volatile tree root explosive? Are you finding it difficult to trust me, perhaps? Um, <clears throat> no, <clears throat> not at all. Why would you make the... <clears throat> and Mirelia, do you think there's any reason to assume she'd harm your possessions? Show some respect. It's all right, Wraith. Forgive me. I'm a bit, um, high-strung. I'm not quite used to keeping company. That I can tell. Uh, but what can I do for you? We are actually looking for a memory potion of sorts. Ah! A memory potion. The kind you use to remember what you have forgotten, right? Precisely. Hmm, can't remember ever making anything like that. But Saffredon once told me you created such things all the time. Saffredon? Pfft! What would a touchy-feely spiritual type like him know about actual science? Very little, I might say. But indeed, I do remember now. I did make potions like that on a regular basis. Do you still have any? I am sorry to disappoint you, but I fear I've handed over my last funds to the captain of the rats. And would you be willing to make another one for us? Oh, but of course, my dear elven girl. Mm. Mm. What were the ingredients? Don't tell us you forgot. Mm. Well, yes, actually, I did. Mm. I'm only a brilliant scientist, not infallible or anything. Didn't you write it down or anything? Write it down? Write it down? <laughs> My dear silly girl, great minds have no need for small bits of paper. I never write down anything, as I remember everything. Except for the potion recipe that we happen to currently need. Um, <clears throat> but don't worry. The captain of the rats is sure to have left at least one or two of his supply. He bought quite a large amount, as I recall. Why would rats need memory potions? I think it had something to do with some kind of threat. And enemies, and tunnels. It, it sounded quite dangerous. 
Where can we find this captain, and what can we expect when we meet him? He commands the dads who live on the shores of Coral Lake. And where is this lake? Hmm. I may have a map which could lead you there. Mm -hmm. Ah! Here you go. Oh, and do not be afraid of the rats. They are benign creatures, even if they are a bit uh, gritty. Thank you, Voltum. And goodbye. After some more encouraging words from Voltum, Merilia and the Wraith prepared to leave for Coral Lake. Evening fell and brought with it a warm glow of red and orange that gently painted the trees and leaves around them. The Wraith, still somewhat insecure in Merilia's company, had taken to wearing his hood again. The wind was still, and though the weather was chilly, they were heartened by a new sense of direction as they set off into the wild. Can I see that map? Of course. Here it is. Hmm. It seems to be a big, scary-looking tree on the map. Not that far from where we are now. It doesn't matter. We won't be going that way. There's also a big bird drawn next to it. Hmm. Coral Lake is so far off. Do you think... Maybe that bird... Could fly us over there. Mirelia, are you being serious? What? Why not? We elves have always shared a bond with the animals of the woods. Sparrows and snow mice are one thing. But a big bird like that, one that nests near a huge, ominous-looking tree at that... Wraith. Yes. Yes, I feel it also. What's a fog? This is not natural mist. Listen. All has gone quiet. And it's so dark all of a sudden. Don't you think we should leave this place? The mist. It's turning black. Wraith, don't you think we should go? No. No, we can't go. This looks dangerous. Hide under my cloak. I will keep you safe. Wraith, what about you? Are you safe? Wraith? Wraith? Are you all right? The mist. The mist is gone. We're safe. I heard horrid things. Did you see anything? Don't ask, Mirelia. It was terrible. Like a wave of evil washing over me. It was so dark. And so... I prefer not to talk about it. I understand. I think... You don't need to tell me if you don't want to. I don't. I admit it would be a relief to tell you, but I'm not sure what will happen if I do. Whatever you have to tell me, I listen. I know. What hurt me was not the darkness, 
but what I saw of myself within that darkness. Wraith. Why do you not fear me, Mirilia? The black fog does not seem to hurt me, and I have all the looks of an evil creature. Why would I be any different from the evil I just kept you from? I don't know. I just trust you. Even before I laid eyes on you, I already trusted you. I don't know why. Hmm. Sounds like that bird of yours. We should sleep now and make for the tree in the morning. Everything looks different here. So bare. And the branches of the trees look black. That must be the work of the black mist. Are we close to the tree? I think we are, Mirilia. Look over there. It could hardly be called a tree. Rather, it looked like a black branching tower of sickness. A looming sinister shape, bursting with wounds from which thick gleaming sap oozed like pus. It was nearly as tall as Mirilia's beloved home tree, and what was even more disturbing were the many mushrooms that hung askew on the bark, all dead and rotting. Those were one's elf homes. But there's no light now, and no voices to be heard. Do you want to enter? Yes. I want to know what happened there. I never knew there were other elven villages in the woods. If there is anything that I do know, it's that the woods are infinite, and no one knows all the creatures that live in them. I have to enter and find out about this. Very well, but let me go with you. Hello? Is anybody there? There's no point, Mirilia. Look at the state of this place. You never know, Wraith. Look. Stairs, just like inside our tree. Does your people tree look similar to this one on the inside? Well, it's a lot nicer looking, of course. But so much is the same. The mushroom houses. The great winding stair on the inside. I don't think I like this. I suppose we'd better go upstairs. Careful. I think the wood might be... <laughs> Take my hand! Thank you, Wraith. This is a door to one of the mushrooms. Should we enter? In the middle of the empty mushroom, on the floor, there lay a corpse. It did not belong to an elf or to any other creature Merilia had ever seen before. Its skin was so pale that blue veins could be seen running underneath, and its over-large head had an enormously protruding chin and nose, which made it resemble a crescent moon somehow. Its ears were very long and sharp like knives, and its almond-shaped eyes were entirely black and devoid of any expression. Its hair was dry, spiky and white, sticking out of the skull like weeds on a rock. The creature lay on its back, illuminated by a pale ray of sunlight from the window. I have to go. Marilia? Marilia? 
What's wrong? Come back. Wraith, we have to get away from here. Terrible things have happened here. Terrible things. It's not right. It's it's not... It's... There, there. Don't be frightened. I don't think Nuzwick's been anywhere near this place. Besides, my face is depressing enough for the both of us. At least one of us should still be able to smile, don't you think? You're right. You're right. Well, well, well. What have we here? I hope you little guys realize how dangerous this place is. The eagle! Woodland eagle. Girl, Aquila Crusator Sylvanis. You wouldn't like it if I were to just call you eagle, now would you? But I'm not an eagle at all. Or elf, or whatever it is you are. You bipedal things all look alike to me. Except for that miserable looking fellow next to you, I suppose. Even I can see anything that ugly can't be an elf. So, what are you then? I am a wraith. A woodland wraith, to be precise. Never heard of anything like that. But I have to say you look pretty suspicious to me. Almost as suspicious as the Dark Snatchers. You know, the creatures employed by the Black Hand to kidnap elven girls and drain their life essence in order to turn them into the dreaded Dorsals. Almost as suspicious as they are. What's that supposed to mean? I think I've made myself clear enough. And aren't little elves supposed to be quiet and listen when their elders are speaking? If only your brain had the size of your beak, bird, then you'd know Merilia is smarter than you guess, and beyond any doubt she is smarter than you are. I am no dark snatcher. How could I be when I don't even know what they are? In fact, I don't even know what I am. Some illustrious figure once said knowing yourself is the first step to wisdom. I wander these woods looking for my true past. And Merilia here is also searching. Ah! And what might you be searching for, girl? A friend. Then what are you doing here, of all places? I hope for his sake that your friend didn't come by this place. The Dorsals have passed through here. I don't think he did. No, we're on our way to Coral Lake to see the rats. So your friend is a... a rat? Must you know every detail, bird? We need to move on. Very well. Though I have to say, if you're going on foot like that, it could take you quite a while. And if you have the misfortune of running into an angry boar on the road, well, you'd be dead before you could say noble eagle of the woods. Oh, so there are noble ones. All right. I understand, I understand. Now, if you have no further need of my comments, then I suppose I'll be off. Wait, please. Forgive my friend, he's a bit, um, grumpy. He's just not used to such uh, esteem, distinguished and um, exalted company such as yourself, Lady... Um, how should I address you? Redler. Redler. Such an aristocratic name. It just radiates the pure class usually associated with woodland eagles. Do you happen to be a descendant of the wise and mighty... Um, <clears throat> a Redless, the third, the uh, Imperial Eagle Lord of the uh, Western uh, Mountains of Pure Greatness? Um, well, yes. Yes, I am, in fact. So you recognize his countenance in my noble, aquiline features? Oh, certainly. Of course, of course. It's just such an honor to be given the 
privilege of having an actual conversation with one as uh, supernaturally wonderful such as yourself. Yes, I suppose being allowed to grovel before my mighty talents feels quite elevating to you. Very well. Ask away. Ask? Yes, girl. Ask what you were going to ask me. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. Oh, great Redler. We're far too insignificant and puny to ever travel to Coral Lake on your majestic wings. <laughs> that may be what you think. But the truth is that my kindness is as boundless as my greatness. <laughs> so I will allow you to climb onto my back and fly with me. I just wish you could have taken a bath or two before take off. Oh well, can't be helped. Come on, hop on. I haven't got all day. Merilia and the Wraith mounted Riddler's back as she spread out her wings and took to the air. The eagle quickly ascended into the wide blue sky and even the wraith had to admit that there was a graceful beauty to the way she soared majestically over the treetops. As the woods glided past underneath them, Marilia kept her eyes firmly shut with fear, until the wraith asked her to relax and take in the beauty of the view. As he comforted her, the fear slowly subsided. She gingerly opened her eyes and experienced the vast grandeur of the woods. For the first time in her life, she could truly feel the mysterious will of the woods. She sensed how everything in this world was connected. From the tiny mouse to the mighty oak, to even the clear skies high above where she herself now flew on Redler's back. <laughs> 